I thought that'd be a little easier. <laughs> so I am uh, Doug Schultz, and I'm a registered pharmacist and a hearing instrument specialist. Uh, me and my brother own Tobin's, and uh, my wife is sitting back there. That's uh, her name is Ruth. She's also a registered pharmacist and a clinical nutritionist. So Glenn uh, asked me if I would present to you folks, and I said I sure will. I enjoy doing this, and um, I don't work for Starkey. So you're seeing Starkey here because Starkey is the company that I use to purchase our hearing aids from at the store. Okay. Again, uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm going to try to roll through this quickly uh, so that we aren't here till 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. And uh, Tobin's, I don't know if you're familiar with Tobin's, we're a 105 year old company. Uh, was started in 1913 in Burlington by a guy by the name of Frank Tobin. And uh, my dad bought the business which was just a tiny little corner drugstore in 1963. And then uh, he uh, retired uh, due to some health issues in 81. And at that time we had six stores. We were the largest independent chain of pharmacies in the state. Uh, and he sold all six, and well he sold five, and then kept the one here in Oconomowoc. And then my brother and I moved up from Burlington to manage this store in 81. And we were, of course, you remember the old store downtown. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like that one. So <laughs> that's the, a little bit of history of, of uh, us. We have six registered pharmacists, and all of, uh, all of our pharmacists have different specialties. Some are diabetic educators, others are smoking cessation educators, uh, Ruth, a clinical nutritionist. Um, so we all have different hats that we wear besides just uh, pharmacy. So that's a little history of Tobin's. You sell a lot of pharmaceutical grade of vitamins. Too, yes, we do. We have a large natural product section. And uh, Ruth and my brother are both experts in that. Um, we started that in 1997. And of course, that is, that is a really important part of our business at this point. So I like to start out seminars with a little bit of a joke to get people, you know, excited and laughing a little bit. So, you know, if we're talking about hearing loss, why not start out with a hearing loss joke? So there was this guy, this elderly gentleman by the name of Ted, and um, he was in his late 80s and decided that he needed to go in to Dr. Schultzenheimer to have his annual checkup. So he goes in, the doctor uh, gives him a physical and everything and sends him on his way home. About a week later, Dr. Schultzenheimer ends up having to go to Tobin's because he needs to buy an anniversary gift for his wife. And as he's walking in, here comes Ted with this beautiful young lady, arm in arm, coming out of the store. Dr. Schultzenheimer says, hey, Ted. You look great. What happened? Well, he said, Doc, you told me to get a hot mama and be cheerful. <laughs> Dr. Schultzenheimer says, now wait a minute, I didn't say that. I told you, you've got a heart murmur, be careful. <laughs> so, you can see how, how wacky things like that can happen if you've got a problem with your hearing. And I'm sure we've all encountered that uh, over and over and over again. So for a $5 Tobin gift card, tell me how many people in the United States, and by the way, this is in millions, have a hearing loss. Whoever comes closest gets a $5 Tobin gift card. Go for it. Take a guess. 80 million. 150 million. 20 million. 175 million. <laughs> 190. No. I've been Anyone else? 25. Okay. You said 225? I was just going to say that. All right. 250. 37.5 million people in the United States have hearing loss. 
Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Should have done like on the Price is Right. And there you go. Yeah. One thirty-one yeah. and fifty. Okay. <laughs> so thirty-seven and a half million people in the United States have hearing loss. Now, for another five-dollar Tobin gift card, what percentage of people? over the age of 75 have a hearing loss? 90. I was well, ever closest. <laughs> to me, it's only the one that's important, and that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Throw out some percentages. Come on. 75. I'll say 97%. What? 97. Okay. You said 75? Yeah. 85. Anyone else? 85. 65. 60. You said 60? Yeah. You won. Oh, he heard, he it's between, me. Well, of course it's between <laughs> 40 and 50 percent of people over 75 have hearing loss. Okay. Now, for another Tobin $5 gift card, how many people in the entire world have hearing loss? Wow. Who's ever closest? How many people in the world is estimated are estimated to have a hearing loss? Yeah. <laughs> One billion. No. Any any wild guesses? 180. 180 million. million. Okay. 100 million. Two billion. Okay. 200 million. 200 million. Okay. Anyone else? 500 million. 500 million. Okay. 300 million. 300 you won again. Three hundred and fifty million people have a hearing loss okay, in the world. Nobody listening. Three sixty. Sorry about that. I messed up. So if you have a hearing loss, you're not alone, obviously. And um, looking at the United States, one in six people have hearing loss. So adults, one in six, have hearing loss, okay? Adults meaning 18 and over. So that's a heck of a lot of people. So um, it's, it's not one of these things that we should take lightly because there are so many people that are afflicted with hearing loss. All right, now what are some of the causes of hearing loss? What do you think are some of the causes? Noise, loud noise. Perfect. Old age. Loud noise. Old age. Old age, yep, that's correct. Disease. Nerve damage. Disease, correct. Nerve damage. Nerve damage, that is correct. Excessive noise, we've got chronic ear infections. You know, we've had ear aches as children. Back in, back in the old days, they didn't use tubes. They didn't put tubes in. The eardrum would burst. That's okay. Yeah. A Not variety of diseases. Money to listen to us. <laughs> now, what about earwax impaction? I see that quite a bit, and that'll take out about five to seven decibels away from your hearing, and that's an easy fix. I've got that. But you know, how many times do we go to physicians and they never check, or they don't give you a hearing test? There's only about 14 percent of physicians during a an exam, a physical, that are going to test your hearing. Now they will test eyesight because I just had my welcome to Medicare appointment. <laughs> Join the crowd. <laughs> yeah. Um, calcification of the bones in the middle ear. Now that's called otosclerosis. Otosclerosis, which what happens? You got these three little bones, okay? Malleus, incus, and stapes. Those three bones act as levers. Now, a lever, as you know, you can take a lever and lift a lot with a lever, as long as it's a nice long one. Those little bones act as levers or amplifiers. If they get calcification, they're not going to work as well. Thus, you end up with a conductive hearing loss. And that can be corrected by surgery, if you so elect to do so. All right? Birth defects. Can't do anything about that. Genetics. Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease, that's another one that causes hearing loss, very serious. Injuries or blows to the head or ear. Yep. My grandfather said some kid poked him in the ear with a stick. Yep. Mm -hmm. So he had one ear that just wasn't working at all. Um, ototoxic drugs, 
This is a list. There's 200 ototoxic drugs, and I brought this along, obviously, because I'm also a pharmacist, because we don't really think of that. Um, you go into the hospital, let's say you've got a serious infection, they put you on tobramycin. Tobramycin can cause hearing loss, especially if they aren't monitoring the blood levels properly. All sorts of drugs cause hearing loss, and the first, the first symptom of a hearing loss with drugs is ringing, or what is called tinnitus, okay? If you take a lot of aspirin or an NSAID, which would be like ibuprofen or naproxen, those drugs can cause ringing. You start taking a lot of that stuff and pretty soon you get hearing loss. So the first symptom is ringing, ringing in your ears. So careful monitoring of blood levels is really important. All right, now we all know that hearing is the ability to perceive sound. And by the way, when people say words have power, they physically do have power because when I'm speaking to you, I am causing the air molecules in this room to vibrate and form a wave that travels and hits your eardrum. Okay? In space, there is no sound. When you watch Star Wars, Star Trek, or any of these space shows, there is no sound. So if that ship blows up, forget it. No one's going to hear it. Okay? So hearing is the ability to perceive sound. Um, now let's talk about hearing loss and how it's associated with other health conditions. All right? So first one, hearing loss is twice as common in people with diabetes compared to those without diabetes. Now you know why that is? Because when you have diabetes, and especially if it's not controlled properly, you end up with what's called angiopathies. That means the small blood vessels that supply blood to these tiny organs in the inner ear, they're not getting as much oxygen as they need to keep them going and keep them healthy. And so you can end up with hearing loss, especially if you're not controlled, if your diabetes is, you're having problems controlling the blood glucose levels. All right, next one. Significant association between high blood pressure and hearing loss. Okay, next one. Maintaining healthy weight and staying physically active may help reduce the risk of hearing loss. Makes sense. Smokers, if you're a smoker, you have a 70% higher risk of having hearing loss than non-smokers. 70%. That is a lot. Why is that? Well, think about it. What does smoking do? It destroys the alveoli in your lungs. <clears throat> if you see a lung from a chronic smoker, it is gray. It looks <coughs> horrible. And now it's not functioning properly. It's not exchanging oxygen for carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide isn't getting blown out properly. And then you're inhaling oxygen. Now your blood's, blood supply doesn't contain a, as much oxygen. And guess what? If that doesn't contain as much oxygen, the hair cells in the inner ear are going to die. So huge thing with smoking. And, of course, there's many other issues with, with smoking. All right, people with hearing loss experience a 30 to 40% greater decline in thinking abilities compared to those without hearing loss. Hmm. All right, now we're going to talk about this one a, a little more detail, but I'm just going to keep clicking through these so you can get a general idea. Hearing impairment is more common <laughs> in men than women. 18 to 69 year old people, again this would be adults, uh, with hearing loss had a significantly higher instance of moderate to severe depression. And this is another one that I'm going to talk more in detail on. And the last one, higher body mass index and larger waist circumference are associated with increased risk of hearing <coughs> loss in women. Okay. 
So those are the, um, the health-related issues. Now here, we're just going to kind of review this again. So we're going to start out noise exposure, right? You mentioned noise. Four million people in, in America go to jobs where the noise level causes hearing loss. And the louder the noise is, the greater the hearing loss is going to be. So if you're in a, in a work area where you've got 85 decibels or greater, the longer you're in that area without hearing protection, the greater your hearing loss. Okay? Next one. Diabetes. We already mentioned. Twice. Two times as many people have, uh, with diabetes have hearing loss than the general population. High fever can cause hearing loss. Ototoxicity, the drugs. Osteoporosis. Now, you wouldn't think osteoporosis would have anything to do with hearing loss, right? But here's what happens. If you have severe osteoporosis, those three little bones that I mentioned in the middle here, the malleus, incus, and stapes, those little levers, they aren't functioning as well. They've got pores running through them, holes. Now you get hearing loss. So again, some of these things you'd never think of, but <coughs> again, studies have been done and they found that that's the case. Cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease, another, another link to hearing loss there. And that, by the way, um, <coughs> low frequency hearing loss is associated with cardiovascular issues. So a person that has the lows, the bass sounds, where they have trouble hearing the bass sounds, that can be an indicator of cardiovascular disease. And then depression, again related, and smoking. We already mentioned that. Dementia, another biggie. Falling, now here's another one. Your chances of falling are three times greater if you have a mild hearing loss than a person that doesn't have a hearing loss. And look at the costs to the medical system of falls. Huge. In fact, it's estimated $67.7 billion will be spent fixing people who have fallen by 2020. Huge. So let's concentrate on two things. Dementia, which the um, study was done by Johns Hopkins, and depression. Okay, We know that those two things are some of the uh, most prevalent issues that we have when we have hearing loss. Now, <clears throat> the one problem with, with all of this stuff is let's say that you find out you have a hearing loss. You know what the average time is for a person to get help after they've discovered they have hearing loss? Mm -hmm. Take Five a wild years. guess. Five years? My guess. <laughs> That's pretty close. How long a little more. Seven. More? Seven. Wow. Oh. Another Tobin gift card. Who said seven? All right. Congratulations. All right. So seven years. Now, now think about this. So let's say you're in your late 70s and you wait seven years. Now you're in your mid to upper 80s. Think now, first of all, the older you get, usually the more hearing loss you get things start to fizzle out on you. But you're not hearing for those seven years and you're getting depressed because you can't get out to a restaurant and socialize anymore because you feel uncomfortable. People laugh at you. They kind of think, oh my gosh, this person, uh, they just mistook this word for that word and isn't that funny and you feel embarrassed. So now you start thinking, you know what? I'm just not going to go out to dinner anymore with my wife. I'm going to stay home. I can't handle this. Or I'm not going to church anymore. I can't hear the pastor. Now, here goes seven years of doing this before you get help. I mean, that's crazy. So people, y'all, I mean, this is, you can ask my wife. <laughs> she said, Doug, you need hearing aids. <laughs> so, so I said, well, gee, I didn't think I had a hearing loss. So you know what I did? I went to the store, and I took my own hearing test. Now that's kind of a no-no, but, but I tried to do it as, as honestly as I could, and sure enough, I had a high-frequency hearing loss. 
So she was right, as yeah. usual, you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's yelling so, and screaming to hire so, yeah. 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 All right. So, so let's let's take a look and and see here. And I'm going to quickly go down here. We've done all that stuff. I got to go to my next slide. So now let's take a look at cognition. Now, cognition is defined as the brain's ability to take in information and then use it, okay? It's not just listening. You've got to use what you're hearing, okay? So the brain, so, so here's the thing. Adults with hearing loss develop significant impairment in their cognitive abilities, meaning you're, you're just not functioning properly because your brain isn't making decisions as well and that occurs 3.2 years sooner than those with normal hearing. Another study that's been done, in fact there are 17,000 articles that have been published about this type of issue, this cognition issue, dementia issue as related to hearing aids, or hearing loss. All right. People who don't seek help for hearing loss are more likely to have impaired brain function and or dementia. The worse the hearing is, the greater the chance of dementia. And those who don't seek help for hearing loss experience mental decline 40% faster than those who do get help. 40% faster than those who do get help with hearing aids. Hearing loss might force the brain to devote too much of its energy to understanding sounds. Okay, you're, you're straining. You're burning glucose. Your brain, which uses glucose as its energy source, it's burning more glucose and it's straining to hear. You're in the restaurant. The waitress is giving you the menu, you know, the specials, and you're straining. And because you're straining to just hear the words, you forget what she said. Okay? Now all of us, I'll bet you all of us have had that issue where you can't hear well in a restaurant and then you forget what the waitress said. So now you're looking at your wife, hey honey, what did she say? Or your, your spouse. All right. Now, brain mapping. Let's talk a little, bit of, a little bit about brain mapping. This is a tool that allows researchers to measure energy spent by the brain while focusing on different tasks. All right? So brain mapping, your brain is laid out kind of like a house. So here we go. Different rooms have different purposes. Different parts of the brain process different information. So we're going to take a look at that. So you have this purple area. That is the temporal lobe. Okay. That's where the hearing processing takes place. Understanding language. The information from the inner ear, which is called the cochlea, transmits tiny impulses to the temporal lobe, and then the temporal lobe has to miraculously decipher those, inf those, those tiny impulses and translate that into speech. Okay? Unbelievable. I mean, this, this to me is a total miracle on how this works. All right. Now, if you look, you've got the occipital lobe back there. That's that light blue part, and that's, your, that's your, where your seeing takes place. Okay? You have the cerebellum, which is the uh, balance and equilibrium and coordination over here. You have the parietal lobe, which is touch, taste, smell, math, reading, writing, spatial and visual perception. And the frontal lobe, which is where you're deciding and planning and all of that stuff. Concentration, attention. Now there's one area called Bracca's area, which is sitting there kind of toward the back of the frontal lobe. You can see that arrow there. That is speech production. That's where speech production takes place. And then over on the right, you can see Wernicke's area, comprehension of spoken or written language. And that, you can see, is in the temporal lobe as well. All right? So now let's look at the house. So the front room here is the kitchen. That's where the decision-making takes place. The middle of the room is the hearing area. And you can see the back is seeing. 
which is the occipital lobe. Now, let's say that you're not getting input from your ear, meaning the, the, the inner ear, which is transmitting through the eighth cranial nerve into the temporal lobes. It's not getting what it needs, all right, because you've got a problem. You've got a hearing loss there. So now what happens? Did you just see what happened with the seeing? It's starting to take over the part that, of your brain that does the hearing. So you start getting, it's kind of like in your house, okay, if you take all the junk mail and throw it on the kitchen table, and then you take, uh, the, let's say the kids' puzzles are there and all sorts of stuff, pretty soon that kitchen table becomes, becomes unusable and you end up moving into the kitchen and you start eating on the kitchen counter and guess what? The kitchen starts to get a little smaller. Not enough, not enough room for prepping. Same thing with the brain. As you start to lose hearing, your brain starts to lose the ability to translate those impulses or convert them into speech. All right, and that's called auditory deprivation. <clears throat> so anyway, that is a problem. And of course, now your decision-making area, which is the frontal lobe, it starts being taken over by the hearing part of the brain because you're straining so much to be able to hear. And now you start forgetting things and you start not making decisions well. And pretty soon, you got a major problem. So the good news is we can do something about this, and that's treating the hearing loss <coughs> with hearing aids. Hearing aids make it easier to hear and follow conversations, leaving more energy for the rest of your decision-making process or for the rest of life. Again, you're thinking about this, you have to think about this as connection, connectivity with other people. That keeps your brain going. Connectivity, reading, uh, listening to music, all sorts of these things keep the old brain ticking, if you will. Kind of like John Cameron Swayze with the Timex watch. <laughs> all right, so the study that they've run suggests that hearing aids may offer a simple yet important way to prevent or slow down the development of dementia. And of course, that would keep adults uh, engaged longer, might keep you at home longer, and we probably all looked at assisted living and know how expensive it is. So that's one of the things, and it's a simple thing. Hearing aids, uh, they're not magic, although when you see what they do, it's almost to the point where it just blows your mind. But they're not magic. They're something that still requires the inner ear, the cochlea, to be able to transmit those signals to the brain. So eight habits that improve cognitive function, physical activity, makes sense, openness to experience, curiosity and creativity, you know, get involved playing games and going out and experiencing new things, social connections, meditation, brain training games. In fact, there's a brain training game that I have on my, my iPhone called Hear Coach, and you can actually download that right off of uh, the App Store. And Hear Coach is a real neat little thing that kind of helps train your brain to listen better and remember things better. Uh, adequate sleep, reduce chronic stress. Now, I don't know if you can figure out how to do that one. I haven't been able to <laughs> come up with a solution to that, but anyway. All right, now the other thing, we've got dementia and we've got this depression issue. Now again, if you can't get out and you're isolated, you start to feel kind of worthless. I'm just sitting around the house all day. Boy, I wish I could get out, but I, I can't hear well. I, I can't talk on the phone well anymore because no, I can't understand anybody. And then people get mad at me because I have to keep asking them to repeat. And pretty soon, I'm feeling depressed. I'm feeling hopeless. So you've got 300 million people in the world that have depression. That's the estimated number. Now, again, we don't typically think of hearing loss as being this massive thing that you know millions of people have. 
You know, you kind of think, you don't even, some people don't even think of that as a health issue. It's the third most common condition developed in older adults. Now typically we're going to think of what? Cancer, heart disease, stroke, diabetes. The top four, right? Well guess what, we gotta, we've got to insert hearing loss in there. Next, as social isolation, it's a result of hearing loss that leads to depression. So if you get socially isolated, as a result of hearing loss, you're gonna, you're gonna feel a little down in the dumps. Now, people with hearing loss, their chances of being depressed are twice as much as people in the general population. Now, when you burn more energy trying to strain to hear things, you're gonna get exhausted. You're not gonna feel like listening. You're going to zone out of a conversation. Pretty soon you're looking into outer space. You're not concentrating on what the conversation is about because you're straining. All right. Now, how can better hearing help? So number one, if you're depressed, obviously, and I mean you're getting to the point where you're suicidal, you need professional help, probably psychiatric um, See a professional. Get your hearing checked, obviously. I mean, that would, that's a no-brainer. And you know, that's the thing. If, if that's misdiagnosed, we're, we're really messing up. Healthcare is messing up if we misdiagnose someone with dementia because it's due to hearing loss. So I think hearing, hearing tests should be done on a person that has, that, that, that has dementia, or suspects they have dementia. Um, you're going to regain independence. You're going to reconnect with family and friends. Um, you're going to improve the quality of your life, improve the patient's safety. We've already talked about the fact that people with mild hearing loss are three times more likely to fall. And improves productivity in the workplace. Well, that's another no-brainer. I mean, if you can't hear, how are you supposed to talk on the phone? Customer talks to you, you can't hear them. That's, you know, it's just, it's a safety issue too if you're working in, in an environment where there are machinery, where there's machinery and things you need to hear, not good. So here is a picture, I took a selfie of myself in our backyard. Those are not antlers, by the way, that's a couple of them. <laughs> yeah, that's, those are our river birch trees back there, okay? But it's not just the hearing aid or the technology, you have to find somebody that really knows their stuff. They have to be computer savvy because all of the programming on these hearing aids is now done with computers. And you have these sophisticated programs that are used to program the hearing aids. You have to have somebody that understands people, that can relate to people that has fun with people. When you go in and you spend a lot of money on hearing aids, wouldn't, wouldn't it be a lot of fun to have some fun doing it instead of walking out of the office and, and going home and thinking, what the heck did I do, you know? This person was a total dud and I didn't learn anything. I like to spend about two to three hours with people when I fit them with hearing aids. And that, to me, is minimal. And that's because there, there is a lot of educating that I have to do. Number one, to help people understand that they need to wear their hearing aids. Not just when they go out to dinner. They need to put them on in the morning, take them off at bedtime. To get the brain trained to receive that, those impulses again. So I like to do a very personal approach. I like to find out what people's hobbies are. I like to know what their health conditions are medications, all sorts of things like that, because that helps me to understand what I need to do as far as programming these hearing aids. Um, you don't buy hearing aids and expect not to come back to the office. Usually, it takes about three visits to get those hearing aids programmed correctly, and going over things or repeating things that you might have gone over in the first appointment because you usually only remember about 25% of what you hear in that first appointment. 
So usually three appointments it takes, and then after that it starts to lessen up, and, and depending on the individual, uh, usually I have them then come back every six months. I don't feel so dumb anymore. There you go. Yeah. God, I got to make my third appointment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So how can we help? How can we do this? Okay. Well, number one. What do we do with these hearing aids? You know, hearing aids are very sophisticated computers now. You've got a computer sitting on the top of your ear that is over a million times more powerful than the guidance system that NASA used to get Armstrong in the, on the moon in 69. That's mm -hmm. millions of times more powerful than that. You have hearing aids that are, well, I'll keep going because you're going to see some, some things here that is it's just going to blow your mind. So rapid noise reduction. What does a hearing aid do to reduce noise? Well, first of all, the computer is listening for background noise. Background noise in a restaurant typically is lower frequency because it's all this babble going on. And that's called dynamic noise. It changes, it's going up and down and all that stuff. The hearing aid's computer understands that and will then cut that noise in between syllables of words and also in between words of a sentence. So you're looking at something that's working and doing this stuff in 22 millionths of a second. Next, help with speech understanding in windy and noisy situations. So when the mic ports on the hearing aids get that wind turbulence going over the top, the hearing aids computer says, oh, that's wind turbulence. I'm gonna knock that down by 30 decibels. So you don't get all that waffling and everything going on. Next, provide easier listening in restaurants and social gatherings. Well, obviously, it creates a better quality of life. You can wirelessly stream your television into the hearing aids. You can wirelessly stream computers into the hearing aids. You can wirelessly stream, uh, believe it or not, Amazon Echo. <laughs> there is connectivity with that now. So there's all sorts of things accessory-wise that you can use to help you hear better. People with really bad speech discrimination where even if you're getting that amplified signal into the ear, the ear is not working the way it's supposed to, and so their speech discrimination is not good, they're missing a lot of words, you give them a little microphone this big that has an accelerometer in it so it knows whether it's up, down, sideways, or whatever. You put that mic on somebody's shirt, and now they're talking directly into your hearing aids. So if you're in a restaurant, you've got poor discrimination, put the mic on somebody, now you're getting a direct input. Incredible stuff. And if the mic gets dropped, that little mic, no, it's smart enough to tell the hearing aids, don't play that crash in that patient's ear. That's how unbelievable this stuff is. All right, next one, allow listener to hear the phone in both ears. Now that, to me, is a phenomenal thing. So I get my phone call, and I've got some tech from India on there, let's say, who are hard to understand in the first place. At least I've got them in both ears now. So I can take my phone, put it in the pocket like so, and I can be talking, and I can be on my computer and hearing everything they're saying in both ears. So that's another really cool thing that uh, that is great for people with hearing loss. With the phone, does that apply to both Android and Apple? It does not, but it will be. Right now it's only Apple. And the reason for that is Apple has a patent on the Bluetooth 4 streaming technology that they use. But they are working, now this isn't Apple, I'm talking about other companies are working. In fact, the one I can think of right now is Google. Yeah. They're working on um, technology that will allow the hearing aid to get that Android signal, that streaming signal. Yeah. But right now they don't have that available. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about the, the latest and greatest technology. This product line by Starkey was introduced on August 27th so it's brand new. You folks are probably the first group other than hearing professionals that are going to be seeing this. In fact, I just had um, 
an audiologist from Starkey in my office this afternoon, and he said, Doug, I think you're probably the first person that actually has those hearing aids. So you're getting, you're, you're kind of the first in the state here. So here we go, let's take a look at it. It's called the Livio, L-I-V-I-O, and there is, there are two <coughs> models of Livio. The, the, the real premier model is called Livio AI. AI stands for artificial intelligence. And that is the first hearing aid that combines artificial intelligence with sensors on board the hearing aid. And let's talk about that. Now, Starkey calls this a healthable. Now, we've just talked about all these health-related issues with hearing loss, right? They've come out with a healthable hearing aid. And they're telling me that this hearing aid, with all of the licensing and patents that they have on the intellectual property that is involved in this hearing aid, they're eight to ten years ahead of the competition, any other <coughs> company in the world. That's the hype. Now, we're going to talk about what is it that you use to control this hearing aid. You use your smartphone, or you can use a remote control, or you can use the little rocker switch on the hearing aid, or you can even tap your ear, and it's going to control this hearing aid and do certain things. So you have the first hearing aid that has an accelerometer on board, a 3D motion detector, all right? So it's detecting all this stuff. It's detecting acceleration, moving your head around like this, and artificial intelligence, all built into this little device. And I'm telling you little because I'm wearing one. That's how tiny this thing is. And you can imagine how in the world do they get all of that stuff packed into a hearing aid when almost half of it is the battery compartment. All right? Unbelievable. Nanotechnology. That's what it is. All right, so the Thrive app, and Glenn, you're familiar with TrueLink. This is called Thrive, and it's meant for this hearing aid, the, the Livio hearing aid series. It will give you physical activity score because it's checking your steps, how many steps you've taken. So you're gonna get physical activity. You're gonna get mental fitness because it's measuring conversations with other people, how long you've been doing that. It's gonna be measuring the um, time spent, let's say, listening to music. Again, that's something that's giving your brain some activity. So you get a mental fitness and a physical activity score, and when you add those two up, you get what is called a Thrive Wellness Score, all right? And the maximum is 200 points at the end of the day. So now your hearing aids, and you don't have to have your smartphone with you to, to get this stuff. The hearing aids store all that in their computer, and then they, when you connect your smartphone up, to the hearing aids, and of course they're going to connect once you open up the Thrive uh, application. They will give you all of that information right on your smartphone and tell you that. 
So that is only Apple or is that uh, Android? Android also? as well. Android as well. Again, the only thing you can't do right now with Android is stream sound into your hearing aids. So your phone calls, you won't get that. <coughs> um, music coming from your TV, or uh, not from your TV, your uh, any like music on your smartphone. Bluetooth. Or, or TV, if you're watching TV on your smartphone, you won't get the audio streamed into the hearing aids. By the way, it does that in stereo. All right, let's watch a little video on this Thrive app. Introducing the Thrive Hearing App, a full-featured, easy-to-use app that enables hearing aid wearers to track their body and brain health, as well as personalize and control their hearing aids. Thrive allows people wearing Libio AI hearing aids, the first ever with integrated sensors and artificial intelligence, to proactively impact their overall wellness. We call it healthable hearing technology, and it's more important than ever due to the connection between hearing health and overall health. Based on the wearer's activity, steps, and overall movement, Thrive provides wearers with a body score. Thrive also tracks the brain health benefits of wearing hearing aids, measuring hours of use, social engagement, and time spent actively listening. This gives users a brain score. When the body score and brain score are combined, the user gets an overall score called the Thrive Wellness Score. <coughs> users can easily set and track daily goals and become more engaged in living an active and healthy life. Thrive offers many other great features designed to enhance the listening experience of those wearing hearing aids. Users can request minor adjustments that hearing care professionals provide remotely without an office visit, communicate with speakers of other languages thanks to the world's first hearing aid to offer language translation, make adjustments for different listening situations, easily locate lost or misplaced hearing aids, answer calls with the touch of a button, adjust hearing aid volume or switch memories, create geotag memories that will be recognized the next time a user returns to that location, stream notifications for phone calls, texts, emails, or other apps directly to their hearing aids, have hearing aids automatically adjust to reduce the annoying sounds of driving, and easily control hearing aid accessories. The powerful yet easy to use Thrive Hearing app puts more control in the hands of hearing aid wearers. Available for both Android and iPhone, download the Thrive Hearing app today. So what do you think? <laughs> Pretty amazing. How much it cost? <laughs> <laughs> First 400 is free. <laughs> Shut off the whole side. Uh, they're going yeah. to zone out. They're going to zone out. We'll, we'll catch that. We'll okay. catch that afterward. That's a good question. It's a good question. All right. Well,